This is my computer mouse. It's a Logitech G502 Hero. I've had it for a few years. It's a pretty good mouse, but it has an issue with double clicking, especially on the right click. I've found a few solutions online, but none of them seem to last long enough. So I've decided I'm going to pull the mouse apart and replace the switches with some better quality ones so that this issue goes away. My name is Luke, and this is Terminal Curiosity. I've tried a few different ways to fix this problem, including smacking the mouse on the table a few times and blowing compressed air into it to try and fix it, but this never seems to work more than a few days. I got these switches from Amazon. These are Kale branded ones. You could also use Omron branded switches, and apparently there's a big discussion in the community about which ones are better. I'll link to the Amazon page where I bought these, and also to a really good subreddit that talks about this in detail, so you can have a read in case you want to do this repair yourself. I'm going to replace the left switch and the right switch at the same time while the mouse is in pieces then at least it should last into the future without needing this job again. Now I'm going to carefully try to pick out these feet using a sharp pick object. If we're slow and steady about it, we may be able to reuse the glue on these. I've read some things online suggesting that this destroys the glue and you have to buy a replacement set of feet, but I'll just see what happens. I'm slowly rolling the pick towards the direction I want to open up, and that's just gently lifting the glue pads. Yeah, it looks like that's going to break as I pull them apart. If we look closely, we can see those pads are not coming out gracefully. And I can feel a screw hidden underneath here. There it is. And the next one should be underneath here. And there we go. Now it looks like the glue holding this down has pretty much disintegrated, so I don't think I can reuse this. I'll have to buy some new ones or just use the mouse without. We'll see how I go. Now it looks like we have four screws holding this in. And now I need to find a place to pry open the plastic using this pry tool. There we go, there's a slot at the back and I can work my way around using that. Once again, only dipping the corner of the pry tool in because I don't want to sever any cables that might be in the area. Looks like there's one more plastic clip holding it in. That should just pop out. There we go. Luckily in this case there are no cables attached to the outside shell, so we can put that to the side and start work on the main body. So these are the replacement switches, and I am going to put one here and one in here. And if we look really close you can see that the brand of the left and right mouse button switches is Omron, but the brand of the other switches is this one, Kale. Interesting. Now we can remove this connector by lifting it upwards. There you go. And now the wire should just pull out carefully. Like so. We have another one down here. lift up one side with my nail and one side with my tweezers. And that cable just pops out. That board can actually safely be removed now. That was just sitting there. I'll get that out of the way because I won't need to use that. And we have another cable here. Okay, I'm going to carefully try to remove this cable using tweezers. I can actually pry in from the back end very carefully and just give it a bit of wiggle room so it extends just a little bit. And there we go, that one's free. Now we can undo the screws. Now we have two more screws to remove here, either side of the scroll wheel, but those are just barely buried beneath the scroll wheel mounting plastic. I think we're going to have to remove the entire scroll wheel 
and it looks like there's a pin here that holds in this bracket. So if I get some tweezers and pull on this pin, I don't want to snap it, I just want to remove it, then this entire assembly should just lift out. Like that. Now before we do anything else, we need to remove these tiny springs and put them aside somewhere safe. These are likely to drop out in the middle of the repair because they're not secured in. And if we lose these, then the scroll wheel click won't work anymore. And now we can free the board from the assembly. Okay, I've set up the board in a board holder and I've started applying some flux. At first I tried to remove the solder using just solder wick, but this didn't seem to work very well. It seems like, again, the solder is a bit older and doesn't want to flow very nicely. So instead, I've tried to add some extra solder on top, so using some leaded solder, which tends to flow a bit nicer. And here I'm going to try to wiggle out the switch by applying heat to two pins at a time and pull the switch in the opposite direction. If you do this gradually back and forth, eventually the switch starts to move out of place. This is a bit of a weird solution, but it should get the job done. And there we go. That's the old switch removed. And same with this one now. Now we do have to be careful on this side. There's a tiny little resistor here. We don't want to mess with that. And a little bit of pressure on the switch. Just a little bit. Let it cool. Now I'm trying to be careful here to put pressure on the switch but not on the circuit board. We don't want to bend the board, we just want to pull the switch out. And just wiggle it backwards and forwards over and over again until it starts to loosen. I don't have a heated desoldering gun so that would make this job much easier. That's on my list of cool toys to get at some stage. I'll add a bit more solder so I can access this pad properly. And there we go, second switch removed. Now of course we need to clean up all the old solder on the pad so that we can put the new switches in. We'll start by adding some flux and then add some more solder on top of that so that it flows nicely into the solder wick. Again being very careful of that tiny resistor there. Sometimes when I'm desoldering with solder braid, I find that the old solder doesn't flow very nicely off of the pads. And sometimes this is because the used portion of the solder braid still attached is absorbing all the heat. So an easy way to get around this is to simply chop that bit off and use a fresh section. Now we can clean up the holes with some IPA. If you're enjoying this video so far, hit that like button for me. And while you're there, you might want to check out my previous video where I did a very similar repair job on a Logitech conference camera that had a broken DC jack. I got a really good comment on the last video from this user who suggested using plumber's putty to hold the component in place while I'm soldering. That way I can use my left hand to hold the solder. Thanks for the pro tip. I don't have any plumber's putty this time, but I'll have to look into that. That sounds very useful. All right, let's put it back together. So here's the board with the new switches installed and we'll put it back in the chassis. Before we put the scroll wheel back in, we have to remember to put these tiny springs back in place. Otherwise it won't click very well. And now we can put the scroll wheel back in place. Now this goes nose first, but on top of the springs and I'll hold that down while I put this pin back in and click. Looks pretty good. The connectors can go back in now. And these ribbon cables go back in exactly the way they came out. So first you check that the plastic is extended, then you put the ribbon cable in place, and then you push the plastic down, and that should secure them in. And now we can put this sideboard back in its home. So once again, check that the plastic on the connector is extended, then you put the ribbon cable in place and then press down the plastic. As you can see, that's held in sturdy. And that can go back into its little slot here.
Now the first time I reinstalled the top half of the shell, it clicked together but something wasn't right. The right click and the left click were mushy and missing their target. So I removed the shell again and then tried again to reinstall it. And this time I pressed down on the front to try to get that to click into place. And now the switches work properly. And that's the switch replacement on the Logitech G502 Hero. The new switches feel pretty good. The feet came off in pieces and I'll probably have to order some more parts for that. But that's fine, it still works in the meantime. And as we can see, the double clicking has been completely resolved. If you like this sort of video and want to see more cool stuff I work on, like electronics projects and fun tips and tricks, hit the like button and consider subscribing. Cheers.